Um, <clears throat> hey, what's happening, everyone? This is Coolest Eagles on Nine here. I'm playing a game called Serena, a game I found on Steam. Sometimes, when I make a great effort, I can remember her scent, the sweetness of her breath. Serena. Um, this game will really make you think it's about a guy who's alone in the woods and. Well, I'll just let the story play out for you. Serena? Why can't I see you more clearly? I've played Why can't I even remember? I played through this game once before already. It really makes you think. At this the end was of the taken game. on that crisp winter night at our mutual friend's hunting lodge. We came back indoors laughing, giddy as teenagers. It was truly like an enchanted time, like we were in a magic circle where no sorrow or pain could touch us. My love, we don't have a lot of photos of ourselves as a couple, so this one is quite important. The guy who snapped this, our host that night, used an actual film camera. It was a different world back then. My love, we don't have a lot of photos of ourselves as a couple. Serena enjoyed spice in our life. I preferred it more bland. We were so different on some points. Would you pass me the pepper? You know, you should use it too. It's good for the pressure. I can't help these random associations. It's always been that way. I, I look at a pepper shaker and think of a Beatles song. It's just a pepper shaker, really. We got this set from that clearance sale, however long ago that was. Yet we never needed to refill it. I didn't notice this before. It reads, contents imported from Ceylon. How old is this stuff? It's just a pepper know. shaker, I really. You always put too much salt in, dear. Think about your pressure. She always worried about my diet. I used to think she did it to annoy me, but now. Yep, guilty as charged, I love salt. <laughs> it emphasizes the taste a lot, and those crispy snacks. It's not the healthier type. Just regular table salt. I always planned to switch to mineral or sea salt, but then I always ended up buying the regular stuff. Doctors, they always overreact. I must be even more exhausted than I realize. Here I am, staring at a salt shaker. <laughs> My thoughts a million miles away. Um, this guy... I'm gonna tell you now, this... This game takes a really wild turn, so... Better be prepared for it's it. not the healthier type, just... The furniture came with the cabin. Considering how off the beaten path this place is, that helped make up our mind. Sometimes she would brush her leg against mine under the table when we were eating. A curious, sensual thrill. The table is worn but sturdy, just like our relationship was. Or is. I just don't know anymore. Our dining table quite modest, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I could tell plenty of stories about this table. To be honest, I'm surprised it's still in one piece. The dining table was well worn even when we acquired the cabin. You could tell from its appearance that it had been the centerpiece of many happy occasions. And there were many more to come. Our dining table, quite modest, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Sharing meals with a good red wine was one of the great pleasures in our relationship, especially in the intimacy of this cabin. Um, this guy's not actually saying these things out loud, these are just his thoughts. And yeah, it's just a very simple point-and-click game, but there's a very big message I should probably it. eat. Can't remember the last time I ate, yet I don't feel hungry. I have more pressing things on my mind right now than culinary exploits. Culinary? I thought it was culinary, but whatever. The stove looks like something from World War I. Considering how basic and ancient the kitchen is, it's a wonder what we manage to do with it from time to time. Well, she mostly. Feeling peckish, dear? The stove looks like something from World War I. So much wisdom and happiness in this bookcase. My life would have been much poorer without all this. The smell of old books is intoxicating. What happens to wood pulp as it ages gives it that distinctive vanilla smell. 
I loved it when we took down one of my favorites and curled up on the bed to read together as the wind howled outside on cold winter nights. Most of the books are mine, but all of hers are still here, too. A lot of rarities and special editions here. I didn't lend out my Necronomicon, did I? No. Of course not. Now, all the other, both the other two books, they bookshelves are the same thing and he says the same thing so it's not really so many afternoons spent in this armchair it's not really worth your time to sit there and click on all of them come sit with me i want to talk and cuddle what did we talk about damn this fallible memory of mine the most comfortable spot in the cabin well along with the bed of course I can imagine her cuddling up to me even now, putting her hand under my shirt. Of course, we made love here, too. There was no place in the cabin we didn't before things deteriorated. Aww. The most comfortable spot in the cabin, well, along with the bed, of course. No, I don't want to leave right now. There's still something for me in here. I better stay in in case Serena comes back. There's always a chance she might return. There's nothing for me out there. This door has been creaking for years. One of the many things I promised I would fix. I have this gut feeling that I shouldn't leave just yet. There's nothing for me out there. Uh, there's no real point to... There's two paintings in the house and there's actually no point to either one of them. This window never got much attention. <coughs> then again, the view isn't nearly as spectacular. <laughs> Priorities, right? I'm sorry, I have a bit of a cold, so... I guess it's covered with grease and grime from cooking, mostly. There's probably nothing out there that I want to see, anyway. All the stuff I care about is inside. Well, except for Serena. I can make out nothing through this window. There was a time, long ago, that all this disrepair felt oddly homey. All the windows are drafty, but like everything else, we just got used to it. We liked it, even. I can make out nothing through this window. This one wobbles. I always meant to do something about that, but somehow never got around to it. This used to be her favorite spot. She used to sit here, put her legs on the table, lean back, and just give me one of her smiles. Those effervescent, incandescent smiles. Once, we dragged these chairs out to the lake and scrubbed off all the dust and grime of years. That was a long time ago. For all the charm of furniture like this, something about it reminds me of Ingmar Bergman. Sort of brooding. One of a matching pair, obviously. There was a piece of gum stuck to the underside of this chair back when we bought this place. We just left it there. That's kind of disgusting, actually. For all the charm of furniture like this, something about it reminds me of Ingmar Bergman. Sort of brooding. Something draws me to this trunk. Is it the memories locked within? Or something else? We use this trunk to store trinkets and papers, but I can't help thinking there's something of importance inside. It's too painful. I want to, but not yet. We found this trunk at a flea market. We used to love rummaging around those in our early years. Big enough for a lifetime of mementos. We hated guns, so we never had any, even out here. But this would have been a good place to keep one, since it can be locked. We found this trunk at a flea market. We used to love rummaging around those in our early years. Come, love, with peace in your heart, said Niav of the ice blue eyes. Hmm. Blue eyes. It's based on an Irish folktale. Warrior poet Oshin goes to Tirnanog, a Celtic otherworld known as the Land of Youth and Promise. Niav is of the Fey folk, the fair ones, fairies. Weird mix of doggerel and artistry. 
The elemental imagery is evocative, but the language and structure are a bit quaint. Still, some lines jump out at you. I've always been drawn to things that are kind of both good and bad at the same time. Maybe because that's so like life. My grandma introduced me to these old legends when I was just a kid, in between stories of what she could still remember of her childhood in the old country. Weird mix of doggerel and artistry. The elemental imagery is evocative, but the language... She made this with her own hands. She was really good. Look what I made, hun. in case we ever need to sweep something under the carpet. See the pattern of yellow squares? It's from this rug I remembered from my nursery. I must have been like three or four, but it always stuck with me. And no trap door under there, just more creaky floor. That... Uh, he says that, and there really isn't a trap door under there. It just seems kind of suspicious that he would say that, don't you think? I always resisted the temptation to sweep things under there <coughs> when it was my turn to tidy up. The rug's all crooked again. Can you help me straighten it out? And no trap door under there, just more creaky floor. Our refuge from the world, a place of warmth and passion. Sometimes we joked we needed to be so far out in the woods because that's how our sex life was, far out. It's weird how much emphasis he puts on the word sex, but okay. The furniture came with the cabin, but the bedclothes we brought with us. A place like this needs some luxury, but without her... There are no monsters under the bed. I guess they're all in my head. That's some good alliteration, but I want to check them into the bed. Monsters! Oh, monsters! Please come out! I want to give you a big hug, and then I want to punch you in the face! I feel... Too restless to sleep right now. I don't sleep well without Serena next to me. Both a blessing and a curse, I suppose. There are no monsters under the bed. I guess they're all in my head. Pretty shambolic, isn't it? The organization of its contents isn't much better. It'd be a shame to say we're fashionistas. We were never that big on appearance. Serena has this mystical aura about her, even when she's wearing one of my mom's charming knitted sweaters. This guy seems very sarcastic and cynical to me. I do remember that on the night I first met her, she wore this beautiful purple dress, like she'd flown straight down from the night sky. I wonder what became of that dress. This dresser contains most of her things. There's mostly beauty products and personal items in it. Just girly stuff of no interest to me. My kind of thing is the bookcase near the table. This dresser contains most of her things. There's a strand of blonde hair in the comb. Yes, blonde hair like sun rays. I'm remembering. Oh, good for you. What's wrong with my memory? Did I have a stroke? Oh, I don't know. Oh, oh, what the hell? Oh. Hmm. Hmm. She also had a brush, but I can't see it anywhere. Nor some of her other personal items. It's just a regular comb bought from a supermarket. New enough to still have all its teeth. Hmm. Hers. I used it too, when shaving. There's only an outhouse, and for some reason, whoever erected the rickety thing didn't think to include wall-to-wall -wall mirrors, so <laughs> this came in handy. <laughs> Should I dust for fingerprints? I might if I were in a detective story. Detective Coolest Eagles 09 on the case. After all these years, it permanently smells of her and her perfume. This guy's really obsessed with scent, which is moderately creepy. The last thing I need now is to see myself in the mirror. I must look awful. There's dust on this, too. It's everywhere. After all these years, it permanently smells of her and her perfume. Commune Evidence, Serena's favorite perfume. I've always told Serena that she doesn't need to wear perfume. Her presence is magical enough already. It smells so elegant. There's violet leaf and silk tree blossom, I think. 
This perfume is perfect for Serena. Why didn't I ever notice? We were happy for a long time, at least I think we were. But as time passed, we fought about every little thing, even this. Wow, that's actually kind of sad. I keep looking at her things, remembering all the good. And bad. Depends on how you look at it. Either a wonderful sensory stimulant, an aphrodisiac, or a subtle weapon in the mating rituals of Homo sapiens. Th that went from kind of sweet to kind of douchey. We were happy for a long time. At least, I think we were. But as time... These keys are for the cabin and the car. If the keys are here, does she have her spare? Uh-oh. I should probably stay here in case she doesn't. Did she even have her own spare? We also have a key for the outhouse, but can't be bothered to keep it anywhere other than under that rock next to the thing. No one comes here anyway. We did have a night prowler once who left a mark inside the outhouse, but we rarely lock it anyway. Why the fuck would a night prowler need to use an outhouse anyway? You know what? You know what? I'm not going to get into this right now. Let's just keep going. I never noticed it before, but there's some rust on the ring. Huh. Should get a new one. Yeah, maybe you should. We also have a key for the outhouse, but can't be bothered to keep it anywhere other than under that rock next to the thing. No one comes here anyway. They prevent my blood pressure from skyrocketing. Doctor's orders. And Serena's. I'm generally not fond of taking medication. I find it hard to believe ingesting a few chemicals will do me much good in the long run. Don't forget your pill, hun. I know you'd rather not, but you know it's for the best. Beta blockers. I have high blood pressure. I'm only supposed to take these before meals. Not a big fan of them. They do tend to alleviate my headaches, though. That's a good thing, I suppose. Beta blockers. I have high blood pressure. It's a beautiful day, though there's an unnatural calm surrounding the area. I've always loved the hazy afternoon shades of this place. It's deep into summer, so there's a few hours left until it gets dark. The sunlight is so bright here. In other circumstances, this would have been the perfect afternoon for us. There's a crack in this window from a tantrum she threw some time ago. It wasn't the only thing she threw. <laughs> Not exactly perfect soundproofing. And that sucks, buddy. The sunlight can be confusing, oppressive, as if pregnant with some ill omen. Or is the stress finally catching up with me? Sunlight is so bright here. In other circumstances, this would have been the perfect afternoon for us. There's a crack in this window from it. The clock is a trophy from our flea market adventures. Chalk this particular purchase up to, every cabin needs one. The huh. ticking begins to feel homey after a while. The first night was a nightmare, though. I can imagine. Time never mattered much to us while we were hiding from the rest of the world here. As long as we were together and happy. The clock has always been rather autonomous. No matter how many times we've wound it up, it keeps going out of sync. Actually, I think it might have gone out of sync. Again. No trusting this clock. I wonder what time it is. As if it mattered. The clock has always been rather autonomous. No matter how many times we've wound it up, it keeps going out of sync. Unlike its sibling, this lamp would last for months. We brought the lamps with us when we got this place all those years ago. They were from a garage sale. The sun is streaming through the window. No reason to turn this on. All these metaphors and similes in my head. Light of my life. Make light. Wait, that's another kind of light. <laughs>